When you were raising your kids, though, did you have another outlet for your... Well, I was, I was a drama professor for 25 years at the university, and uh, I liked that a lot, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just so voracious for experiences. You know, I wanted... To, one of the teachers I had at Ithaca College said, Oh, here's the little girl who wants to play all the parts, which, you know, I was. And in many ways I did, so I was really lucky. What do you look for when you look at a text? I, I tend to like things that are not, not, not um, uh, straight narrative, plot, uh, you know, not what they used to have inside a box set. I, I prefer plays that have more, more things going on, more theatrical and um, Although I really liked plays of ideas, I really liked Copenhagen, which is just three people talking, but it was such good ideas and so well, you know, and so well written. So that's what grabs but, me. But, See? but what makes what makes this play that's about ideas and three people talking theatrical? Their relationship with each other and the way that the playwright transcends ordinary conversation, using um, well, he uses the death of the of the boy, the, the, using symbols, it's the, it's, the, it's the theatricality. Theatricality doesn't have to be uh, dancing girls and, and uh, strobe lights. It can be cerebral and still be theatrical. Because you can do things, in my view, you can do things in the theater that you can't do anywhere else. And people well, like what you're doing in To Kill a Mockingbird. I mean that the people on the stage who are playing with you don't see you, in quotation marks, but the people in the audience do. And people accept that. You don't hear people going around saying, I didn't understand what that woman was in that play. Mm -hmm. uh, Is that because the audience makes a pact with the actors? When yeah, they go mm -hmm. there's a, there, you know, the you remember um, uh, The Lady's Not for Burning and a phoenix too frequent, Christopher Fry. He was a, a poetic, uh, sort of a poet playwright in the 40s and 50s. And he had a line in a play called A Phoenix Too Frequent that said, uh, it was about love, but I think it's about the theater too, it said, your intelligence holding my intelligence above us within our hands. And that's, I think that's what happens when I mean, we've had a couple of performances. I mean, all the performances, the audiences have been very attentive, but I believe that a couple of times we've had an exceptional rapport with the audiences with this To Kill a Mockingbird, where that's what I felt. I felt our intelligence and their intelligence meeting somewhere. If you're in the audience, you have to participate. You have to both give up something and participate in something. You do that in university as well, as a, in, at a lecture. What, is ma what makes this different? Well, it's heightened, and it has professionals who spent, you know, people come to the question and answers here and they say, how did you learn all those lines, you know, and of course, what they don't realize is that we do practice, practice, practice. Any artist, you have to keep up your, keep up your, everything, your body, your voice, your mind.